What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Infamous Ghost Money. And thank you for tuning into this video because it's going to be a juicy one, man. We're going into the case of the Clear Gods, which is a fraud group, group from Detroit that was going in on cell phone account takeover fraud. Nah, they was, they was really going in. You about to see they was going all the way in. And they wasn't called the Clear Gods for no reason. We about to find out because we're going to do a deep dive into the indictment to understand how they pulled off their scheme, the steps they took, the different variations and things they did to execute on it. And of course, where they slipped up so they could get caught up and you know how their potential downfall came upon them. Cause remember, this is an indictment. These are all allegations and these gentlemen or ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if they all male or female, whatever. Um, they are innocent until proven guilty. You heard? So please remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you can catch more of my content on financial fraud and of course how to stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. Alright? But before we get into the information, I want to give like a PSA or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if y'all haven't noticed, the ghost been MIA for a minute. And I want to I just kind of explain that real quick. I don't want to ramble for too long. But um, uh, some things came up in my life that uh, is, is definitely more lucrative than YouTube, I guess you could say. And uh, time is money. So I got to be very careful where I'm putting my time. And as much as I enjoy doing these videos, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. This is a hobby of mine, but it takes a lot of time to uh, be looking up these cases, researching it writing the story in a format that makes it interesting then you gotta think about editing it and i do all this by myself i thought about trying to hire people or you know third parties to do it but it, it never has that that special touch that the ghost likes on on his videos know what i mean but with that being said i still really enjoy doing this and i and i built this this channel on my own and i'm really proud of that and i appreciate y'all for rocking with me every time i be putting out these videos but um with this video, we're going to try something different. I'm going to be a little less uh, formatted. It's not going to be as scripted as it usually is. What I did is I broke down the case because the indictments, they be having mad extra information that, you know, is not really that interesting. So I took out the points that really mattered so we could really see how these folks did their thing and really get an understanding of how they pull off their scheme. All right. But with that being said, once again, I appreciate all y'all for rocking with me. From how I started the channel to where it's going to now, you know, hopefully this works out. If it don't, take the feedback and keep growing. That's all it is. Life goes on. Life goes on. Know what I'm saying? But with that being said, let's get right into the information. All right? All right, so boom. Wednesday, September 7th, 2022. Seven people were indicted for a $28 million cell phone fraud and identity theft scheme. 28 milli. Seven individuals were indicted by the federal grand jury in Detroit, charging them with conspiracy to commit wire fraud and aggravated identity theft related to a $28 million cell phone upgrade fraud scheme spanning multiple states. Spanning multiple states. This is a cell phone upgrade fraud scheme. So many different variations of fraud and that's that's what that's why i find it interesting so this group we're about to see they will pull in a, a cell phone upgrade scheme because usually when you think cell phones you think of sim swaps nah this ain't sim swaps and they definitely was it was running it up so you know let's get let's let's see let's keep it going uh so this this case is coming out of the eastern district of michigan and the individuals involved so far the defendants involved is emmanuel luther aka stuntman Joseph Ingram, uh, Donnell Taylor, aka Devin Harris, aka Zalu, all right, uh, Dominic Dom Barnes, Delano Lane Bush, aka Does, Delante Davis, and Joshua Montley, aka Scrap, Young Scrap. All right, so these are the defendants involved so far, and this case is still early, and this was a gang, gang, gang. Uh, the clear guard gang to be specific so you know i won't be surprised if more names end up coming being associated with this case all right but let's let's keep it going so according to the indictment unsealed 
the defendants was a group that referred to themselves as the clear gods and they engaged in an ongoing scheme to defraud using the personal identifiable information of other people to acquire significant numbers of apple apple branded cellular devices on credit which they then resold for a profit so simple as that you know all these scams is about trying to find a way to launder the dirty money that you're getting so in this scheme that we're about to get more into they was they were stealing information so it started off with identity theft but what they did with those identities is they they opened up accounts with at&t or they knew these people already had accounts with at&t and they took over their accounts and then from there they would charge up devices against their account simple as that but let's you know it sounds simple but it's complex all right so let's keep it moving all right so the clear gods were a group of individuals throughout detroit metropolitan area who engaged in a large-scale cell phone fraud scheme stealing the identities of hundreds of real persons and defrauding dozens of AT&T Apple stores throughout the United States we going in we going in and I'm gonna go hard I right, chill all right so the object of the conspiracy was for the defendants to fraudulently enrich themselves through a scheme and artifice to defraud by obtaining without the authorization personal information belonging to other people and then using that information to acquire a significant number of apple branded cell phone devices iphones imax all them things team android holla back but by charging the devices to the customers accounts held in the names of their victims without their authorization my bad i hit the mic told you it's a new format i'm getting used to this can i live anyway so in total, the scheme encompassed more than 26,000 fraudulent transactions, resulting in an approximate loss of more than 28 million dollars. 28 millions, 28 millions, 26,000 transactions. So clearly, this was not no 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 small scheme. These dudes knew what they was doing. All right, the defendants referred to themselves as the clear gods because the name clear gods was a reference to the process of clearing or removing or reversing the new service lines and upgrades from a, gi a given cellular account which is a key element of the scheme so just to just to explain that a little bit it's one thing to take over someone's identity open phones in their name that's cool but the downside to that is you have a device, which is great, but it's still tied to someone else's identity. And eventually these companies is going to find out, hold on, something's up with this profile. Somebody's going to report it eventually. And now you just stuck with a device that's going to be, you know, deactivated or, you know, easily tracked right back to you. So what they do is after they steal the device or, you know, obtain the device against the person's credit without their authorization, what made them special is they had techniques that allowed them to separate that device from the phone number. So it's like they technically got a phone that was attached to no service, no nothing. It was a clean phone. So they could resell it and whoever they resell it to can now reactivate it to their name or register it against their name with, with, with whatever uh, cell phone company that they want. Y'all get what I'm saying? So it, it, it's very elaborate, the steps that they took to steal against these people's names but then it was the next layer for them to now clear it thus the name clear gods all right so let's keep it going the members of the conspiracy obtained the personal information that they stole such as the social security numbers and other information by uh through going through dump websites dump websites pardon me and if y'all don't know and, and i know y'all know with the amount of scammers in my comments i know y'all's know uh, dump websites are pretty much underground websites where people could purchase stolen information. They all over the place. I talk a lot about Telegram, but these things have been around for ages. Uh, but yeah, they refer to as dump websites. And once they had that personal information, they would then use it uh, to apply for these accounts. Or if they knew these people had AT&T accounts, they would take over the accounts and how they did it. We're about to find out. The members of the conspiracy used the unlawfully acquired PII to, a, to open customer cellular accounts or to access already opened accounts with AT&T. Following the successful completion of a credit check, 
the members of the conspiracy also added themselves on as their associates and their associates as authorized users on the fraudulent accounts allowing those individuals to charge devices to the accounts all right so what does this mean basically first they they obtained the device using the stolen information step one then once the accounts were open and the credit check was cleared, you know, that process when you first get it, you got to check your credit and all that. All right. So cool. Uh, once they got past that process. So now that they could go in and get these devices, they would add themselves on as authorized users. So when you add it on as an authorized user, if you're the owner of an account, you could give these authorized users authority to do all sorts of stuff. Pretty much you could give them the same authority that you have as an owner of the account. So they could open lines, purchase things against credit, all that. So you see how uh, this scheme is pretty layered. All right, so let's keep it going. After a member of the conspiracy obtained either account holder or authorized user status, the co-conspirators then entered one of a variety of retail stores in all states, in, in a bunch of states, pardon me, most frequently Apple stores, but occasionally AT&T stores or other retail chain stores to upgrade the service lines on the accounts and obtain brand new devices, which were most commonly iPhones. Uh, and then these devices were then charged to the fraudulent customer cellular accounts or otherwise purchased on credit with the defendants typically needing to pay at most a small upgrade fee. So, I mean, it, it spells it out right there what, what they did. Uh, once they got that status, they would then go into a store be like, you know, I'm on this line. Uh, it's it's it qualifies for a free upgrade. I want to get that new iPhone 15, 16. I don't even know which one they up to. They all look the same to the ghost. I can't tell the difference. But anyway, yeah, they'd be like, I want that new iPhone. They'd be like, word, you want that new iPhone? OK, you just got to put like five, 15, 20 dollars, whatever the amount down. And then we charge the rest of that against the account. You know, they got all these plans that you could do where you get. Cause like, yo, like seriously, how, how expensive are cell phones nowadays? These things is like over a thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? Like a thousand dollars per device. So you got to get like a second, third job just to avoid, uh, afford some of these devices, but they will put just a small down payment down and then charge the rest of the device against the plan or the account. And then they could pay it off month over month. But you know this was fraud so once they got that device boom that's the that's like the the main part of the scheme now they got the device in hand so let's keep it going the members of the conspiracy used a variety of methods to reverse or clear the newly added service lines or upgrades from the victims accounts thus the name clear god's holla back allowing them to either repeat the previous step of the scheme at another apple store or prolong the overall scheme by delaying victims discovery of the scheme this process typically continued for a given account until at&t flagged the account and closed it because of suspected fraudulent activity so once they were able to reverse the devices it was pretty much cleared off the accounts and if they were able to still run up that same profile they could keep doing it over and over until at&t was like hold up how many devices this person is getting and just removing from their like this is off something's not right cancel that but that ain't no big deal because they would just go on these websites and acquire more information and just run it up all over again it was that easy let's keep it moving the members of the conspiracy routinely communicated with one another in real time during the execution of the fraud scheme with one individual inside a store fraudulently acquiring devices texting another individual who would be providing them with the personal information that they would need to answer uh, to answer account access questions to clear the lines. Because, you know, when you go into the store, they're going to ask you a bunch of personal questions about yourself, things that are related to your credit that only you should know. And uh, with these account takeovers, with these this, these uh, fools and dumps that they was getting their hands on, they would have someone else in the store just whispering to them like a like a like they had a, a, a Cupid or whatever you call it on their shoulder, an evil spirit. I don't know, man. I'm trying to get my imagination right. But um, these people will be whispering in their ear and telling them, I don't say this, say this. And they'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, so what you want to know? Give me a second. Let me think about it. Oh, yeah, this is the answer. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so they was probably looking, you know, a little crazy in the store. But it's 2022. You can't judge nobody. So these store employees is probably just like, I ain't even going to say anything. I ain't trying to get written up for, you know, 
coming at a customer like like they're a little woohoo because you know you can't judge nobody but anyways that's that's a part of how they did their thing uh the members of the conspiracy employed various methods to gain unauthorized access to at&t's computer systems for the purpose of creating at&t accounts fraudulently adding authorized users and for clearing the fraudulent upgrades from the service lines at the beginning of the scheme the individuals the this involved the collusive acquisition or theft of rsa tokens and employee ids allowing defendants to later impersonate at&t retail store employees while interacting with the at&t sell support to open new accounts uh, the defendants also impersonated retail store retail sales employees and telephone calls with at&t's retail sales and support teams to make changes to existing accounts so what this is basically saying here is um part of how they was able to get access to make changes to these accounts is they were working with innies that's where the collusive acquisition comes in or they would just be straight up finding a way to steal these uh legit at&t employees login credentials once they had that information they could then go onto their own devices and make changes or they could call up the support center that the employees call to make changes and impersonate an employee and pretty much be like oh hey uh my name is uh oscar robinson uh yeah I'm, i work out of store 2231 my number is 5432666 uh, yeah 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 all right yeah so boom we need to take this line off of that account this one that don't ask any questions it's all legit i work for the store chill uh yeah you got it thank you boom and that's how they were able to just go in and clear these things off the devices it, it was that simple but let's see how it progressed as the scheme progressed and at&t started to notice that this this was a scheme that was going on stealing employees information they started to restrict access to their platform so it can only be accessed through at&t equipment so that's like the tablets and the, the the computers that they have in the store so even if you had the information you couldn't just log in from any other device it had to be one of these specific devices so when this happened uh, members of the conspiracy took steps to acquire actual at&t network devices this included social engineering and sleight of hand swapping of broken or disabled devices for active tablets from retail store and from retail sales employees, the outright theft of retail sales employees, tablet computers, and the occasional strong arm theft of desktop computer towers from AT&T stores. So once AT&T cracked down on their method of stealing employee information and impersonating, and they wasn't able to do that no more they took it a step further and they began to just straight up steal the devices that the employees were doing and there's several examples of how they did this and the devices once again are the tablets that they walk around the store with hey how may i help you all right i got you beep 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 beep, beep. they were stealing them things that's that's like the the gold mine for this scheme right here uh, the members of the conspiracy employed a variety of techniques to obtain login credentials, including social engineering, which they did a, a method called shoulder surfing, which is when you look over someone's shoulder is real old school. You just peek over their shoulder <laughs> and you can see what they typing in. Simple as that. They also paid bribes to retail sales employees so they could get their login credentials. Holler back one time for the innies and the threat of force or violence to coerce retail sales employees into giving up their login details voluntarily so they was just straight up you know strong arming these poor employees man you just you just trying to make a living selling a new iphone 14 for 15 1600 dollars and these people is trying to put you through pain man i ain't sign up for this dog anyway and on at least three occasions certain of the defendants used actual force so they was really putting these people through harm to attempt to coerce a retail sales employee to give up their login credentials yo these fraudsters man know your lane you do fraud white collar crime don't take it past that then now you just you bring it to a whole nother level man stay in your lane anyway though one example is on march 2nd where one of the defendants emmanuel luther i believe his name was stunner man 
um yo push uh intentionally logged out of an AT&T tablet computer in Arlington, Texas, causing a store employee to re-enter their user ID and password into the tablet while another individual was super surreptitiously, pardon me, they were doing it discreetly, recorded the interaction. So simple as that. That's an example of the shoulder surfing. Uh, surfing. Mr. Luther here would log out the employee trying to act like it was a mistake and the employee not knowing that they being fooled is just typing in their information while somebody's right there behind them recording them and then once they had that information if it was before AT&T cracked down on it they could log into any device impersonate an employee and have their way with the accounts that they took over if it was after the scheme that was one part of the puzzle they would have the information that was one of the methods that they would get the login information and then the next step would have to be stealing the device so that they could log in, so on and so forth. On or about March 25th, 2018, Dominic Barnes, Joseph Ingram, and two individuals known to the grand jury worked together to steal a tablet from an AT&T store in Winter Springs, Florida. Barnes and Ingram distracted the store employee while the other two individuals swapped a store tablet with a deactivated tablet that they had brought with them into the location. The following day, Ingram paid the other two individuals $400 a piece each via his Bank of America account. So this is an example of where they would just swap up the tablets. They walk in with a tablet that looks similar to the AT&T store employees tablet, distract them a little bit. Voop, voop, thank you. Give them the fake one. You got the real one. You walk out. By the time they notice, you're already long gone. It's that simple. And I could imagine many of these employees they would get a broken tablet and they probably wouldn't even report it or they would take a while to report it because they probably would think it is the right tablet it just ain't working so imagine if they didn't report it that could be weeks months however long that they got a live tablet that they could have their way with insane in the membrane crazy for us is clever man that i must say it's a lot of work that fraud ain't easy it's i mean it's easy to do many of them but if you're trying to be complex, it ain't easy. It's a lot of levels to this. On or about May 5th, 2018, Donnell Taylor stole a tablet computer from an AT&T store in Novi, Michigan. As with the prior incident, when the employee appeared to be distracted, Taylor swapped the store tablet with a deactivated tablet that he had bought with him. So once again, same scheme. Good old social engineering. Social engineering is is something that every amazing fraudster kind of employs in their technique in one way or another. You don't got to be a tech genius, but if you're good at tricking people and, and manipulating people, you could go far as a fraudster. That's just up until the FBI gets on your ass. Facts. Anyway, throughout the scheme, to decrease the likelihood of getting caught, co-conspirators regularly and routinely sought to work with corrupt AT&T retail stores employees Members of the conspiracy referred to these corrupt in employees as in-stores. It's the first. I usually know them as innies. Uh, the co-conspirators identified and worked with the in-store employees by several different retail, pardon me, employed by several different retail chains across multiple cities spanning multiple states. Ultimately, the end goal of the scheme was for the members of the conspiracy to liquidate their fraudulently acquired devices through one or more fences or plugs, essentially laundering the proceeds of their scheme. So, you know, the main goal of the scheme was getting their hands on these devices, putting the work to clear it. And now you got a device that you obtained for zero dollars and you could resell it for hundreds, probably close, even thousands sometimes. And what does it matter? You ain't pay nothing for it. It's 100 percent profit. But with that, and as with many fraud schemes, they eventually got busted. And this is where we're going to look into, you know, how they got caught slipping. All right. So first off, uh, there was multiple occasions where these individuals were caught in the store making these purchases because every store got cameras on it. So such as July 7th, one of the defendants, Joshua Motley, attempted to fraudulently acquire two Apple devices uh, from the Galleria Apple Store in Glendale, California. This is documented. Then on August 14, 2017, Dominique Barnes acted as a lookout 
while another individual known to the grand jury fraudulently acquired two Apple iPhone devices from an Apple store in Irvine, California. Barnes and his companion were subsequently found in possession of 15 fraudulent, uh, fraudulently acquired Apple iPhone devices. So in that second example, that's like how they would use uh, a mule or a burner or a fool. That's what I like to call them too. That's the individual that's going into the store to actually do the scheme with the fake ID and all that. So they would be directing these people and uh, these individuals were caught on camera. And many times they know what you're doing and they just build in a case on you and they eventually bust you like uh, this situation where they were found in possession of 15 fraudulently acquired Apple iPhone devices. Then we have September 21st and 22nd, 2018 at a different Apple store in Novi, Michigan. Dominique Barnes and Joseph Ingram charged multiple Apple iPhone devices to the accounts of two victims. Then on November 10th, 2018, Emmanuel Luther provided an individual known to the grand jury with a rental car, which the other individual then used to travel to an AT&T store in Dearborn, Michigan, where the individual stole a computer, a desktop computer. So basically they sent this guy on a mission rented a car for him told him hey yo this is what you got to do you're gonna run up in there steal that desktop and you out lord knows how much they paid him but with the amount of money they was making and the potential extra money they could make with this desktop computer you know i sure hope it was worth it i mean clearly not they got indicted so you know anyway another way that they got busted Initially, certain members of the conspiracy obtained fake identification in the names of the victims. So the people that identities they stole, they took the time to make fake ID. However, in the later stages of the scheme, the conspiracy shifted to a common name method of identity fraud, where they specifically sought out the information from individuals with the, na with the same or similar names as the members of the conspiracy setting up accounts and upgrading lines in these common names eliminated the need for fraudulent identification cards due to the similarity between the names of the victims and the co-conspirators so putting putting this simply they stopped making fake ids because i guess it was taking too long i don't know and they will find people that had the same names or similar names to the victims that they were stealing their information from and this made it a lot easier for them because they didn't have to make fake IDs and they could send in these bozos using their real IDs. But let's let's think about how stupid that is. Why would you do these type things against your real name with your real ID? Like, I don't know. Like, what do these people think? You don't think you're going to get caught? You think you're invincible or invisible, whatever the word is? Like, you think you both? You think it makes sense for you to go into a store knowing that you're doing fraud and give your real ID to do something? I never I would never understand that. Like you shouldn't be doing fraud. You might as well just 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 go to the prison and just say, hey, lock me up because I'm an idiot. Anyways, let's keep it moving. In furtherance of the above conspiracy and to the effect and object and purchase. They, that's what I'm saying with these paperwork. They be having mad extra th information in there. But pretty much what this slide here is saying, um, the feds were all over the group chats that they were in, in which they would exchange information with each other via text or SMS. Um, and what they did with these group chats is they were able to cross reference the stolen information that they exchanged with each other in their group chats with the victims who actually had their information stolen. And by piecing it together, they were able to say, all right, so you sent you sent a uh, stunt man the information for this victim here and then a couple of days later they had their accounts taken over it only makes sense that you probably did this i'm just saying and they got multiple examples that they saw people sending information and then boom these people have fraud against their names they, they compared all these notes and they created a chart to see all the victims that they were able to cross reference with how they did their scam and this is just an example of some of the victims. And you can see sender, the identification that was used and how much was lost. Tons of examples for multiple defendants. They uh, they, they just talk openly 
on their chats and emails and all sorts of stuff because i don't know i guess they think they ain't never gonna get caught but then when they do get caught all the evidence is sitting right there and it's so easy for the feds law enforcement to get warrants to search all your devices and they will they will uncover everything even if you delete it they they gonna find a way to find that shit so uh you see tons of examples where each defendant was exchanging information and, and huge losses, 13,000, 37,000, 51,000, thousands on thousands. They was going all the way in, but it, you know, it eventually came crashing down. And here on this slide, it just shows no matter how minor what you're doing, it could, it could definitely be translated to big Fed charges. So just from them using their cell phones to exchange information, that right there is wire fraud. The act that they use electronic communication for them to impersonate being retail employees to clear the devices. That's an example of wire fraud. Using electronic means in order for them to upgrade and purchase these devices. That's an, another example of wire fraud. So it's that easy. Identity theft and wire fraud all over this case. But like I said at the beginning, this is only an indictment, y'all. Th there could be... A legit explanation as to why these clear gods did it you know what i'm saying so they are innocent until proven guilty you heard so keep that in mind but that's the case on the clear gods and their cell phone account takeover case but i also saw another another story that popped up on my radar that was related to cell phones but this one is about a sim swapper uh, and this 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 story is coming from Krebs on security dot com. If you ain't heard about my guy Krebs, this this dude is he's like a legend in the, the fraud news reporting game, whatever you want to call it. But he recently put out a story about a sim swapper that was abducted, beaten and held for two hundred thousand dollar ransom. Uh, this gentleman who uh, he was he was kidnapped and there was a video of him being kidnapped because he was a part of a sim swapping crew and i guess his op gang in the sim swapping world they got a hold of this dude and his name is foreshadow in the sim swapping community and they pretty much kidnapped this dude and had him in the back of a car with the blammers pointed at his dome piece uh, and they had him begging for his life I'm going to show a picture of this and I definitely um, edited it, edited it. I don't, that don't sound right because uh, YouTube be playing games and I already had a couple of my videos flagged and I had to blur some things. So I'm learning uh, YouTube don't like the bland blamers. But here's a, a picture of him. Pop this up right here. And in this video that is circulating and if anybody got it. You know, I would appreciate if you could send that. It'll be interesting to see. But in this video, uh, Foreshadow is recorded saying, "Yo, Dan, please, bro, send that for send that two hundred thousand. Um, yeah, saying send that two hundred thousand. They're going to kill me if you don't." And he would offer to get a job at a mobile store as an any, so he could make sim swaps easier for these guys. He's like, "I'll pay you back. Just let me know what you need. I got you for real." Any work for free, whatever, how long you need me to. I'll apply to any store you need me to apply to. I can be a plug. I don't care if I get caught by the cops or anything. I'll get that money back to you. I used to do that type of work. Now, I ain't trying to make fun of this because this I can only imagine how scary this situation is. And that's the next thing, y'all. Um, You know, fraud is great when it's working and you make your money. But once it comes crashing down, whether it be law enforcement or you got some ops that see you, you know, you, you get into the bag and they don't like that. You know, it's it's you. It's not a comfortable life. I can only imagine. Uh, but yeah, this young man, he was caught up. He was in too deep, way too deep. Uh, but according to the article. Uh, it seems like Foreshadow was able to get, get out of the hands of his captors. And he's reportedly working with the FBI right now. And uh, Mr. Krebs was able to, to find in these underground chats a message that was sent out saying Foreshadow is not dead. He's currently cooperating with the FBI 
due to him being kidnapped and an attempt to extort him for 200,000. If you have any chats with him, destroy that. Because they coming for you. This man is cooperating. And that's the thing, man. If you ain't made for this life, and I'm not saying that lightly because your boy Ghost, I'm not made for that life. I just talk about it. I find it interesting. But I would never do that kind of stuff because it ain't worth it for me. You know what I'm saying? But um, if you win this life, this is what comes with it. It's not just fast money and, you know, having a good time and all that. Stealing from people and all that. It's a lot that comes from it. You could potentially get your life taken. Just like this young man foreshadow. And now he's labeled as a, you know what I'm saying? He's labeled as a Takashi in this in this joint. But um, I guess best of luck to that young man. But with that being said, y'all, thank you for tuning into this video. I'm not really sure how long this went. And I'm not really sure how it's going to come out. But we're going to put it out and we're going to see how it goes. But I appreciate everybody. I'm open to all the feedback. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about this case. And if there's any other cases you want me to break down like this, your boy's all the way for it because this is much easier than editing and doing all that other good stuff. But anyways, thank you for tuning in. Remember to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel to add some more quality, entertaining, and useful content to your YouTube timeline. And stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. All right? Peace.